Hi, first, it's really exciting that we're even having this conversation. Um, the question I have is, there seems to be agreement we're talking about education. How about stepping back and talking about the education of our children, which really is going to ultimately drive the changes that we're hoping for? Do any of you have any suggestions? I know Alice Waters is the guru of the edible school programs. Should that be, is that going on here? What should we be doing to educate our kids in the community? It is going on, and I think it has to come from the parents in the schools, and it has to come from the, um, and I mean, that's hard in some, in some spots. But I think, you know, I've actually worked with a couple private schools on their programs. We created a garden at one of the programs and spent a whole summer sort of creating a plan uh, that we put into effect, and they have a garden in the back yard of the school. Um, Which school is that? This is Hawken. Okay. And uh, I know Laurel is doing a program too. Very small scale. And some, you know, there's schools in the Cuyahoga Valley I know that, you know, are, are doing things as well. But the hardest thing is I think when you're talking about urban schools or, you know, schools that don't necessarily have the funding or don't have the parents' interest, I think these schools that, you're, that have the funding and that are getting experience setting them up can help these other schools, you know, you know maybe partner with the people that don't have the support, and then you can really help your neighbors get it going. So, I should point out that Urban Community School, Brian Driscoll's over there, he asked the first question before, but Urban Community has a good, a good garden as well, a very yes. functioning garden. Mary Holmes, do you have anything to add well, there? I just think it's ironic that at one time, every Cleveland school had a, had a garden. Really? And uh, that's long gone now, but um, I have heard that from a principal who was principal of a school in Cleveland said, Really? Every school had a garden, yeah. So um, maybe we're having to go back again to something else. But the old is new. The old is new. Yeah. yeah. Jeff, is there a role that Heinen's is playing there? I, I don't know if there's a role. I, 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 I kind of agree with what Doug said. It starts with the parent and how they eat. And um, I think we all have the not all, but many of us have the experience that your kids will eat what you eat. Um, <laughs> and if you're eating fruits and vegetables. They'll eat fruits and vegetables, but if you're not, they probably won't. So I do think a lot comes from the parent. There is a, there's a local producer that probably Doug buys from um, and we buy from called um, Farmer Jones who has a program called Veggie U. And, and so that their program is really to educate, you know, like fourth grade age children. So there are programs that exist, uh, very small, um, but growing. His program is growing, and so we support that. Uh, That's based in Milan, Ohio? Yeah, Huron. Yeah. 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 And, and, so, um, and they have a kit that they provide the school, I think. That exactly. makes it very easy. Exactly. Great. I think we can take another question. Hi. I want to, first of all, thank Doug for meeting with me during his free time and giving me an education on food. I had seen the movie Food, Inc., and it kind of blew my mind, and I needed help. And I want to <laughs> thank you for meeting You're with welcome. me. Um, I'd also like to thank Kynans for bringing in some grass-fed beef in the last couple months. Um, I shop at the Cedar Green store and I'm there often. Um, my biggest dilemma is when I go to the grocery store and I'm standing and I'm looking at organic on this side and local on this side. What do I do? And what does Mexican organic mean? <laughs> so the two, two, two different questions that uh, maybe you can help. Jeff Heinen, please start mm -hmm. us off okay. well, with, yeah. with Mexican organic. <laughs> yeah, well, but, I mean, one of the things that, again, I think is kind of this perception that's wrong is um, because we do care about our sourcing. Our produce buyer just spent four days in Mexico about oh, six or seven weeks ago. And, and to, use, to quote him, he was blown away by the sanitation practices he saw. Um, he has been on hundreds of farms across this country, in Ohio, in the region, and, and he said that their practices, now these are pe people we buy from in Mexico, but these practices, he said, are easily in the 98th percentile. They're doing things that most farmers in the United States don't even think about. Um, and so uh, this idea that, that somehow, um, that was again, it's, things have changed. Mexican produce was a problem, I think, in their terms of how they raise product. But it's a, it's a global world, and, and, and they would, there's people who want to sell their products because they can get more money for it in the United States. That's a reality. 
And so they take the steps to sell to people in the United States. So uh, you don't necessarily need to be afraid of whether it's grown in Mexico or Canada or Argentina, um, first thing. Um, okay, organic local. Yeah. I, I organic, mean, this is where, organic apple from New Zealand, yeah. uh, local non-organic apple from Giaga. This is where life's not black or white, right. you know, and uh, there are people probably who would say organic is better no matter what. Um, the, the other side of that coin is there's lots of people who say one of two things, and I think both these guys would, would agree with this, is that they either say, is, I'm not paying to get certified organic, or B, I do things that are beyond organic, and, and there's a whole movement that says this is better. And, and then there's a, a small percent who would say that if you're big organic, somehow you're no longer good organic, you, that's, that's bad organic. And I, I mean, I don't know, I mean, uh, but, but. I think organic's becoming a marketing term for people to say, you know, that it's, you know, so much better, and there is a percentage in organic, I think, that doesn't have to be. Um, I, also, I think if you know your food source, that's the best thing you can do. Unfortunately, you can't always figure that out. So I think buying local you know, is best because you could call the farmer, you could go to the farm and find out you know, what you're buying and do that. Now, you know, everyone can't do that, but that would be the ultimate. Yeah. Right, but that's, right, but that's not practical. Right. You said you can't even go to see your suppliers. Right. They couldn't possibly go to their farmers. So. We got range. The, I think yeah. the, the next panel, if I may suggest, should be farmers. <laughs> Another <Right>. question. <laughs> um, I'd like you to talk about um, the sense of community that comes from both CSAs mm -hmm. and the farmers markets. And food tends to be an equalizer. We we all can talk about it. It's sort of like being able to talk about the Indians. It's a way we exchange um, ideas and concepts and what we value. Like what is the best corn in northeast o sweet corn in northeast Ohio. Um, uh, in Leaf in Lakewood, uh, the CSA has 500 people that come to it. It's like a little mini festival every Wednesday. Um, farmers markets all across Northeast Ohio, they are part of the community that we've lost when we commoditized food. Could you talk about that, please? Well, it certainly was um, something that became evident even in the very first Saturday of the market that people. Uh, and, and I've talked to people who've started farmers markets in other parts of the country as well. It, it is a very prominent aspect of attending a market is seeing like-minded people, finding the farmers, talking with them, feeling that you're really giving money back to the community. Um, there's also the issue of uh, farmland preservation, which you know, in our current recession isn't such an issue, but certainly um, has been a, an enormous issue in, in Northeast Ohio with farms being converted to strip malls and, and um, uh, other higher and better uses, if you will. So uh, the sense of uh, seasonality, the idea of uh, supporting someone who is uh, growing a product, is very proud of that product, um, and sharing the um, recipes, sharing the uh, stories. It's, it's all very much part of a farmer's market activity. I think we're going to leave it there. Okay. Okay, Mary Holmes, uh, founder of the North Union Farmer's Market, Doug Katz of Fire and Cleveland Independence, and Jeff Heinen of Heinen's. Thank you all very much. This has been a, a fantastic conversation. <laughs>